Hello, uh, you are welcome to uh, this presentation about communication rules in smart grids. <clears throat> I am Mohammed Insulati, professor of communication automation and digitalization uh, at School of Technology and Innovations at University of Vaza. In this presentation, we are going to um, go through some basic concepts like what is smart grid, definition of smart grid, telecommunication in power systems and smart grids, concepts of smart meters, uh, why smart grids and the challenges, uh, concepts of telecommunication systems, wireless uh, compared with wireline communication, quality of service uh, in communication, a review of some communication systems, cognitive radios, and <coughs> Internet of Things. So um, it, it is about one and a half hour lecture. So we try to go through those topics in um, like briefly. And um, we will not going to um, like uh, ex explain uh, some uh, like details uh, or going through some deep uh, mathematical uh, analysis just to give an overview of the communication rules in smart grids. <coughs> okay, let us start with the smart grid definition. So if we read together uh, the definition of smart grid as I uh, found in, in, in one reference, uh, you can find the references at, at the end of the presentation. A smart grid is an intelligent electricity network that integrates the actions of all users connected to it and makes use of advanced information control and communication technologies to save energy, reduce cost, and increase reliability and transparency. So this is a general definition of smart grids. Okay, now, <clears throat> uh, what is the rule of telecommunication in power systems in general? So we know that power systems uh, uh, is a very complex system which is stand uh, like over uh, uh, or on pillars like power generation, power transmission, and power distribution. But uh, many forgot the telecommunication. Actually, without telecommunication, it wouldn't be possible to have a reliable communication, uh, a reliable power system uh, at all. So telecommunication is very important in the protection, control, monitoring of the, uh, uh, of the network, and of course, synchronization as well. Okay, um, in a classical power uh, uh, system, telecommunication is critical for reliability and continuity of operation. But in smart goods, it is critical for almost every operation. So uh, uh, the success of operation on future intelligent energy networks or smart grid will be based on a grid integrated near real-time communication between the grid elements in all four dimensions of generation, transmission, distribution, at, and also at the load site. Okay, okay. Now, now let us go through some just general uh, uh, st st structural map of the uh, like uh, uh, classical power system. So, in in the classical power system, it is a centralized and and closed power network where you can see that the power is generated from the generation site and it goes through the transmission to the distribution. So it, we have, as, as uh, power engineers know, we have st step up for, for the voltages and step down and so on. So it is the, the operation, it goes in, in one direction. So the power flow is usually in, in one uh, direction from the generation to, to the consumers. And in, in the consumer side, <clears throat> uh, most of the consumers are passive. It means that they are only consuming power. Like we have, for example, nowadays we have electrical cars and we, we might have saving of power. And also we have like like uh, uh, conventional, like s small uh, uh, customers uh, and as well as like big customers like factories and so on. So it, it is a centralized uh, a power system and also it is a closed power system. Okay, now in the smart grid, the structure is is uh, essentially different. So now we, the power flow it can be from both directions. So the power flow it can be from one di the, the, uh, the the direction of like in the classical power plant where it is it will be of course part of the 
uh, smart grid so the power that goes in in this direction but also from the consumer side we might have the power goes in the different direction so you can see here for example uh, we have active uh, like customers so the co uh, at the customer side we, we might have also for example um, uh, solar panel or we might have like uh, uh, wind turbines where it generates power and if the power generated more than needed so they they can also sell the power to the network or to the grid okay so the power is uh, it goes from two directions from the generation to the consumers and also from the consumers to the to the grid okay and you can see also here that in the smart grid we have the facility to save the power when it for example when we have more generated power than needed by the demand or uh, uh, by loads then we can save or store the power to be used later when uh, at, at the big power time so it can also go from the direction of from saving to the from the stored power to the uh, to the uh, like big, big customer or or to the other customers as well uh, for the electrical car as well so electrical cars we know that they will uh, they will have like large storage of power like storage storage bank of of of, of electricity and and um, um, uh, for example, when when the power is is uh, uh, at 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 uh, the low level or, or the the demand at at low level, so the tariff of the power or the cost of the power is low, then people might just start to like charge their cars, and when it is fully charged, if they don't want to use the car at that day, for example, then at the peak. Uh, time uh, 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 or at the big demand then they can they, they can sell the power to the to the grid with higher cost so they can also make money actually by storing power and resell the power to the grid so now you can see that the the, the, the structure is very complex now because now we have different directions of the power going from from generation to the consumers from consumers to the grid and such kind of of network is very complex actually to 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 control and to maintain because it is very important to keep the stability of the network in in, in the operation and also such network will have many features like self-healing or like higher re uh, reliability as we will see later but here the 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 uh, the communication is very important here because the communication it can between the consumers between the, even between the load actually between the like like individual loads to the to the grid is important to have some kind of communication <coughs> We are going to explain this in, in, in more details later. So between the customers, like small customer or big customer, we have always uh, to use the smart meter. So this is smart meter or intelligent meter, they, uh, they are uh, uh, critically needed to, for the success of the operation of smart grid. Okay. Uh, what is the smart meter? Uh, so the smart meter generally we can see here that symbol structure for the smart meter where we have um, at the heart of the smart meter we have the microcontroller which can be like uh, arm processor or it can be also fbga where uh, it, it controls the operation of the smart meter and also it run the it, it runs the the uh, the code which uh, um, uh, contains all the intelligent functions of the smart meter and it is very important for the smart meter to be able to communicate with the external network as well as with the internal network with the external network as you can see here so we we, we have in, uh, interface to the external network where we can have different plugs here like wireless wireline like like blc for example the power line carrier or it can be fiber optic it can be also gbrs it can be 3g 4g 5g modem and in the future also it can be 6g it can be ymax and so on so we have different kind of communication media that it can be used by the smart meter to, in order to communicate with the external network it, it will communicate with the power utility power management and it should be able also to communicate with the distribution control system 
usually they are different because in many countries they can be handled by different like uh, uh, companies though so the the smart meter should be able to communicate with both of them okay and uh, it should have also interface to the local network where it communicates communicates with the with the uh, local loads for example or or l l locally connected um, uh, um, facilities inside the the the, the customer in, in the customer side so uh, this local communication it can be done also through bar line carrier it can be also wireless like like zigbee uh, uh, modem or bluetooth it can be like uh, some uh, protocols for device to device communication can be also Wi-Fi or near field communication NFC or whatever kind of of communication because of that the interoperability of a smart grid is very important so smart grid should be able to to operate uh, with different kind of communication medias there are some standards actually designed for the communication of smart grid like IEC 62056 okay and in the smart meter of course it is a meter so it should be connected also to the to the electricity lines so we can see here that it has to the ac source or with the dc source we have circuit breakers or breakers here to for the dc which the dc load or the dc source can be the uh, the uh, like solar panel or it can be the the wind turbine if it is not connected to to inverters so uh uh, here also we can we can see the, the the AC source where we have protection and control for both of them and then we have the meter unit where it, it reads the, the 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 values of the current voltage uh, like, like rating power <coughs> sorry and and also uh, this goes to the analog digital converter and then it goes to the for, for the processing by the microcontrollers so this is a very general uh, or briefly introduction to the smart grid as i said smart grid is very important part in the uh, so the smart meter is very important part in the smart grid okay um, more general structure here so you can see uh, of course the smart meter each, each smart meter is able to should be able to communicate with the utility or with the dc the distribution control system but um, uh, to have more efficient network it would be possible it would be better to have a data con uh, a concentrator so the data concentrator co collects the data from many smart meters or uh, from many customer like especially for the small customer sites they collect the data and of course it can communicate in both ways and then collecting the data from them to the to the wide area network and then from the wide area network it goes to the utility and to the dcs uh, uh, to um, control and manage the power distribution in the network so this is very important part um, you can see that for, for example if we assume that we have a building and in that like building we have let's say uh, um, maybe uh, 70 or even 100 apartment so instead of having smart meter to be to, to connect the each apartment to the utility and this and DS, dcs then it would be better to have a data connect uh, concentrator where we collect the data from this 100 apartment together and then we have only one one connection to the utility and the distribution control system however um, uh, maybe it is worthy to mention that this structure it was very important when we when we were talking about about gsm gbrs and we're talking about the 3g system and even in some of, of, of 4g uh, wireless network or cellular network but uh, with the 5g the 5g has been designed in order to also to fulfill the the requirements of iot the, the internet of things uh, it means that um, one of the uh, like features of 5g and also it will be in the 6g of course that the ability to serve like massive 
equipments or massive um, uh, uh, like uh, communication points. What, what this means that uh, in one sector it would be possible to sell thousands of um, uh, uh, connection points or communication points. Uh, this means that in the future it would be even more reliable or more easier to connect each smart meter directly to the network through the 5G or the 6G. But for the 4G and the 3G, it, 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 uh, it is more efficient to use data concentration in order to minimize or to reduce the number of the wide, wide area network traffic. Okay. Now, the question is, why smart grid? Why we need smart grid? Okay, smart grids provide much more efficient power system. It solves the problem of high peak to average power ratio or power requirement. What it means? Uh, usually, in order to fulfill the demand at each time, um, we know that the demand of electricity is different. So it, it can be, for example, low at night, or it can be high at the uh, like rush hour or that uh, or the at peak hours, and also um, uh, it can be, for example, in in, uh, um, in in countries close to Sahara, for example, they need it for uh, more power consumption for the for the air condition in the uh, in the summer time, um, uh, in the winter time. For uh, in some of the Western countries, they need uh, more electricity for for heating, for example. So the, the 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 requirement of the electricity is not fixed. It can increase and decrease with season, and also it can decrease and decrease within the same day. Within one day, you can see the power requirement is increases or the load demand is ne uh, increase and decrease uh, uh, according to the hour uh, hourly based actually. So, in, in that sense, um, uh, when we want to design uh, a power network or a uh, uh, power system, we should be able to fulfill also the peak requirement. So, it is not, it is not good that we, we cut the power when we have a like, high demand of the power. So, because of that, um, the cost of the, uh, creating a reliable power system uh, which uh, like achieve all requirements at all times, it is very expensive. For example, in Europe, uh, they said that about 8% of installed energy is used less than 1% of the time. So you can see that it is, it is not efficient at all. 8% is a huge, maybe it, 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 it means that billions of, of, of dollars invested to, to, to achieve only which can be working only 1% of the total time. So it is not efficient. The, 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 uh, the classical power system is not efficient in that, in that sense. Okay? But in, in smart grid, we can see that um, uh, uh, the, um, uh, the design of the, the, the power uh, network, it can be much, much more efficient in order that we have stored power. For example, we have uh, this renewable power uh, uh, g g generators where it can like uh, feed the power when it is needed. Okay? Uh, second is that uh, the cleaner power generation becomes necessary to mitigate the climate like pollution. And uh, uh, for example, we use now, now the distributed generation concept by using like wind turbines and solar cells. Uh, extra generated energy can be stored for later use when needed. This could be done, for example, by using like batteries or some other kind of storage techniques. Um, uh, one of the main features of smart grids is, is the high adaptability to meet the temporal needs in efficient manner. So it, it, it is, it is uh, one of uh, uh, the, the features and also actually um, uh, um, it, uh, it is possible to design the smart grid to be like uh, to have um, uh, the feature of self-healing if there is some like fault in part of the power, then we, we, we can also uh, um, uh, make the, uh, the uh, generation flow smooth uh, of, of the power. Um, there are actually many 
uh, smart grid features uh, uh, that can be um, um, difficult to count all of them in one presentation, but here in this nice uh, like picture given in, in, this, uh, in, in the third uh, uh, source, you, we, we can see here that the reliability, the stability, measurability, for example, controllability, a lot of, of um, uh, features, they are associated with the smart grid, but this presentation, this lecture is not for smart grid uh, like specifically, but for the telecommunication uh, used in smart grid. Okay. Uh, distributed generation opens many technical challenges such as real-time grid sensing and monitoring, distributed and complex control, strict communication requirement. For example, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the delay or the latency of the communication must be less than s a certain threshold. Um, also, the data rate requirement is also very important and so on. Uh, cybersecurity problem due to the open architecture of the smart grids. So uh, telecommunication technology is an essential enabling co component of smart grids in, at all stages. For example, in the smart meters and uh, appliances and smart grid and that uh, electrical grid, communication between the grid components, example for the protection, synchronization, control, monitoring at every aspect communication is very very important as i said there are also several performance criteria must be like achieved for example the latency or the delay data rate reliability and so on okay now let us uh, uh, give a general introduction for those who don't have telecommunication background about telecommunication systems so the, this figure shows a general uh, like architecture of a telecommunication system. You can see that usually telecommunication is responsible for, for transmitting or, or for um, like uh, uh, um, moving information from one point to another point. So we have data source to be transmitted. We have the transmitter to make the, the, the data like uh, um, uh, to prepare the data for the transmission over the channel. It depends on the channel. It is, is it wireless or wireline or coaxial, like coaxial fiber or whatever. And then uh, in the channel, usually we have many like uncertainties, many problems like noise, interferences. We have distortion of the signal. Uh, we have like power losses and fading. So we have a lot of problems associated with any channel any communication channel uh, then the signal will, would be received by by the receiver and then once it is received successfully then we receive the data with limited distortion and or error so we should have the signal we should have some kind of uh, like threshold about about the uh, 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 about the errors of course we cannot have wireless or wireline communication system with 100% like uh, reliability or we cannot be sure 100% that every data transmitted will be received but but we, we, we usually we have on average we have some kind of threshold for example we say that 99.999 of data should be received successfully okay so uh, now what, what we have communication or, or, or what are the communication protocols or communication styles? We might have broadcasting where the transmitter send data and we have shared channel between many receivers. So we can see this kind of communication like for example in TV or in radio or even now. For example, um, uh, now I am talking so I am like broadcasting my my my, my uh, talk, to uh, which can be like followed by many people, and this this called like shared. Uh, this is called like broadcasting uh, through the shared channel. Okay, um, it is more tricky when we have like um, uh, the communication flow or the information flow should be between uh, different uh, points. For example, uh, you want to talk 
with your mobile to other kind uh, to, to, to the other person so you have we have two mobiles to should be uh, we, we should achieve the communication between them successfully but all co mobile networks they they use the shared channel so we have that the, the transceiver a1 should be able to to for example communicate with with the for example transceiver b1 and transceiver a2 should be able to communicate with the transceiver b2 and so on so all of them they use the same channel how can we guarantee a successful communication between all these terminals within the same or within the shared channel so we have actually different protocols we have different concepts here where they are very important in telecommunication it is called multiple access the multiple access of of the same channel this is especially important for the wireless communication because wireless communication is shared between all channels of course it's also important in in wire in wire line communication like in fiber optic for example because no one want us to connect fiber optic between only two users usually we have thousands of users they can use the same fiber optic how they can use the same communication media between all these terms this is what we are going to explain uh, during the next part of this lecture so uh, uh, because this lecture actually it is about one and a half hour so i don't want to give it in in, in one presentation so it will be divided into uh, at least three presentations okay Thank you.